Hello. How's everybody doing today? Hi, Kyoko. And Mega Eevee. It's nice to see you all. Good. I'm glad you're doing well, Zara. Hey, Xion. Oh, is it your birthday today, Mega Eevee? Happy birthday. Hi, Ava. How's everybody's Halloween? Hi, Laura Vly. I'm going to go with Blanco if you're okay with that. Yeah, today is Celeste. Oh no, Xion. <laughs> Thought it was tomorrow and then it was today. <laughs> I'm glad you had a good Halloween, Ava. Hi, Cloud Stash. That's a cool username. Celeste Pog. <laughs> It's okay to not celebrate Halloween. I think the point is to have fun. Hello, I see the player you mean. It's like the perfect username for something like that. I saw you guys talking about Rampa before everything got going. I really like those games. They can get very dark though. You got some nice candy, Kyoko. I mean, I got candy too, but I just like bought it <laughs> for myself. <clears throat> Is there a new Danganronpa? Last I had heard, at least when I paid attention, like the creator of Danganronpa was kind of taking a break. Kind of like, um, there's only so many dark games you can write before you need to take a break kind of a thing. Hello, Caitlin. Um, Tater Tot, I hope that you are doing okay after falling into a ditch. <laughs> oh, Xion, you have cake? Ugh. What cake? Halloween bought candy is totally valid. My favorite is going to stores after Halloween and getting them on sale. So the new Danganronpa is Summer Camp, Danganronpa S. I wonder how that'll fit into like all the other lore of Danganronpa. <clears throat> because Danganronpa has kind of written itself into a bit of a corner with like their lore. Danganronpa has also done what um, like Kingdom Hearts did for a while, where they kind of like split up a lot of their lore into a bunch of different mediums. So to feel like caught up with it, you have to have like watch the show or the movie plus all these games it's a lot to keep up with which i feel like kind of exhaust your audience because i haven't watched the shows it's supposed to be kind of like a board game huh hey caitlin i'm so glad that you popped by and i hope you have a great day the um like the vod will be up later if you decide you want to watch too I feel like Danganronpa needs a big restart. No more. <laughs> I feel like the appeal of Danganronpa is kind of like the premise of like murder mystery stuff. And I think kind of adding all that other lore kind of gets lost in it. I like the crossover that Crypt of the Necromancer did with Danganronpa. I didn't know that Danganronpa did crossovers with anything. Danganronpa becoming reality. I mean, with all these things that are actually like VR and stuff like that, maybe Danganronpa isn't something we want to hit close to home. 
<laughs> I just, that's not something that I want. I don't want to like walk past a local high school and have it be like, do you want to be the ultimate thing? That these things aren't what I want in my reality. Let's keep that in fantasy. All things considered <laughs> with dog and rampa universes. Just no, thank you. <laughs> VR Danganronpa, no thanks. The one thing that with Danganronpa that is nice, I guess, is that it's, it's kind of like, considering all the dark content, ha they do make it kind of cartoony. Like having it all be like uh, blood, uh, having the blood be so pink. And like every time you like figure out the crime and like the culprit is like this, this just like shadow at first, like um, having all that be so consistent kind of makes it somewhat comedic. I do think that, like, it's both so dark and so comedic that, like, Monokuma has become, like, a pop culture thing, which is kind of weird. They spilled the Pepto-Bismol. We can say that. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things, it's also, like, weirdly a niche game, like a cult classic type of game. So sometimes when something else references it and the blood is pink, I'm like, is that a Danganronpa thing? And then nobody else in my life gets it. And then I feel sad. That's exactly what makes it so creepy to me. Yeah. I What is interesting to me about Danganronpa is like how we justify these things too, right? Like being forced in that situation and how do we justify these actions? Or even do we justify that like not all the characters justify it or do it for the same reasons. It's very dark. In the Japanese version, it's red. Interesting. Usually, like, there's more censorship in Japanese stuff, is my understanding, so I would have expected it to be <laughs> pink in the Japanese version. <laughs> I think my favorite, too, is, like, how... How weird it is to have like these ultimates like what is it the ultimate like gang like bike gang leader with like the massive pompadour <sighs> it's just such a, an out there game very jojo like that's a good way to describe it as far as like how <sighs> big like some of this stuff is as far as like uh, gestures or like you thought it was me or whatever it's so interesting Mondo yeah that's the one and like the character development that some of the characters get which I just I just I wouldn't expect from that type of game it's it's an interesting franchise I think I picked it up on a whim one day because it was on sale and then I was I I I got it for the Vita because it was like, uh, this game exists for the Vita. What other games are there for the Vita? And then I was surprisingly into it. Mondo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> Wouldn't it be like Monokuma's Bizarre Adventure if we're comparing it to JoJo? <sighs> but it's just like everything is so big and dramatic. That's what makes me think of JoJo. <sighs> it's just so interesting. I. And like in the, what is it, the second game, one of the answers to one of the things I forget every time, and I know I'm, I forget it every time that I replay that game, and it's, it's the something with the bone, like the bone and the meat, the meat and the bone. That's the one thing that always sticks out to me about the second game too. Hi, Sir Bobulus. We were just chatting about Danganronpa. And that, the theme song is also very catchy. And if we're talking about how bizarre it is, there's the writer whose name I can't remember. I can remember the other name for her, but I can't remember the actual name. Like that is, how bizarre is that? There's just so many tropes in that game that are just so out there and they find a way to make most of it work. What is her name? Anyways. Tangaramba has a special place in my heart, but only because it broke it. We could say that I definitely liked it at first because of like the murder mysteries. I like all those murder mystery, like who done it kind of things. 
And it's very good at that. But it's usually like the person you like the most, that's who did it. Kadoka, is that it? From the first game, the author with the tongue. They always draw her with this exaggerated tongue. And I can remember her other name that, like, you know, you find out later in the game that feels like a spoiler. Um, I can't think of her, like, uh, actual name that you're first introduced to her with. I have played Despair Girls, yeah. And she's one of the girls that I can't think of. Fukawa. Oh, yeah, yeah, Toko. That's, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. Always with the exaggerated tongue <laughs> and the scissors, yeah. <clears throat> like, how many tropes or, like, random character traits can we lean into? It's just such an interesting game. I think I had heard somewhere this idea that, like, whoever created that franchise can only write about teenagers killing teenagers for so long before you need kind of a break, which is totally fair. That would be a very hard concept or thing to write about. I think I, there was a period of time where I just like replayed those games like once a year. And I haven't seen a new one come out in a while. But apparently there is a new one coming out. It reminds me a lot of um, Assassin's Creed, though, where like maybe they've kind of written themselves into a corner with how they've kind of written, done those games. And I haven't recorded myself playing those games because I played them before I had the YouTube channel. So since the spooky Halloween stream yesterday, I have changed the alert sounds so it's less spooky sounds. I forget what they are right now because I did it last night. And I fixed the commands command, so hopefully that works today because it linked to like linked to like the donation page, which is not what I wanted it to. I wanted it to link to the um commands page, like as it should. So hopefully those are all set. And yesterday, the alert sounds should, like, got fixed during the middle of the stream. So. Does it work, Xion? Hi, Yuki. Today is Hollow's Day. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like Halloween anymore. It's also not a spooky game. So we'll see if that link works. Yeah, All Saints Day. I mean, yesterday was like a spooky game, so spooky sounds felt appropriate. Today is not quite a spooky game, so... Sweet. Okay, good. So, um... We have a lot more commands for the bot, as long as the bot works. And all that stuff. It kind of is. I don't know that. I don't know if Celeste is a scary game. Having said that, though, why don't we get going we're interacting with the ghost of a haunted hotel yeah but we're like cleaning for them <laughs> it feels like annoyance is more of like what's going on than anything else all right i need to move all of you over here beautiful and i've probably forgotten all of my buttons <clears throat> And if there is any sound lag, I'm hoping that's fixed. 691 deaths? It's a lot of deaths. Um, did I hear about the Haunted Chocolatier? I did. The new game that is that the maker of Stardew Valley is, come, is creating. I don't know if it's a scary game or not, but... It looks a lot like it looks like they reuse kind of like the same foundation that they created for Stardew Valley. It looks really cool. I don't know if there's a release date or anything like that, um, but. Yeah, 
That looks so cool. From what I've seen so far. I'm sure I've forgotten everything. I'm sure I will get over a thousand deaths. I had some comments that maybe dash assist wasn't the greatest thing and that maybe just like turning down the game speed would be a good option. So I wonder if that would be a good choice to try out at least, which I kind of agree with. The dash assist is something where like once you hit that button, you can't like take it back and you're kind of stuck with well, which direction do I want to dash into death kind of a thing? So, it's kind of what I'm leaning towards. What do you think? For the assist mode. Like, turning off the dash assist and changing the game speed. Like, turning the game speed down. Yeah, I, I can always change it. I am not above turning on invincibility if it means getting through a room that is incredibly difficult for me. Just putting that out there. Right now, my priorities are feeling like I've made progress is like way up here. So that invincibility, I will turn it on. I can always go back. That's very true. <laughs> Thank you. The game speed going down to 50%. Let's try 80. <laughs> Hi, GM Redditor. I don't know why you get to do chores right now. All right. Um, I've forgotten all of my buttons, so this will be an adventure. Woo! <clears throat> And now I feel like I've gotten used to dash assist. Like just showing me where I'm gonna dash. Okay. If I remember right, once we get as far off to the left is when you have to like hang onto the wall. That's, that's not great. My champ stick is sticking to my mouth in weird ways that it shouldn't be doing, which is awful. Okay. Maybe not 80%. Let's go with 90%. You can listen to the cool music. No sound lag this time. Nice. that reward you for dying i was just wondering wouldn't it be interesting ugh, wouldn't it be interesting if the game like actually rewarded you for with like cool music or something like that ugh, almost for dying but i don't know to be fair if there are games that already do that Keep just dashing straight to the side and not up. <laughs> Isn't the learning experience from dying a reward? We could say that. We very well could. Arcade games are roguelikes. Yeah, that's true. I've never played Hades, but that's kind of my impression of Hades, too. Lena does a, did a great job? I don't know that game. Lena Rain. How does it reward you for death? Oh, is that just, oh, the, that's the music. My bad. Wow. I really got dependent on the dash assist, didn't I? Okay. Oh, that's right. This awful mess. Ugh. This sounds horrible. <gasps> Almost. <clears throat> yeah, so, okay, so Lena did the music. I 
have Hades, I've just never played it. Which I'm sure feels like a shame. Oops. Oops. Are the other games like, um, Dead Cells? I also think of um, that game as like similar to Hades, except for, you know, you're progressing upwards. Oops. Binding of Isaac. Does Binding of Isaac reward you for death, though? I mean, I guess when I think of Hades, from what I know of it, I think of it like you get... Um, you get different abilities each run kind of a thing. Music is adaptive. It progresses to certain sections. Oh, that's cool. Mix of a platformer and roguelite. I have a hard time understanding like roguelite and roguelike. But it's probably because I don't naturally play those games. Hi, Doker. You can get a character from dying with certain stuff. That's cool. I have Isaac, but I have not played it. I didn't trust myself to go sideways. Ooh. I think this looks gross. Was it coughing or sneezing that Mr. Oshiro did? Oh, right into it. They caused that. Oh, right into it. <laughs> they released a whole music project in an audio engine. Wait, how does that work? Is that like Unreal Engine? story of um, Binding of Isaac very, like, biblical in a sense. Ooh. <laughs> hmm. Woo! We're just gonna try that again. of the Binding of Isaac story is, is very, like, biblical, like, Old Testament-style biblical kind of thing, like, if I wanna, if I remember from what I've been told, it's, like, actually based on an Old Testament story. Whole game is really biblical, but more of a critique on how it can affect a child. That makes sense. Ugh. I think that I have gotten used to the dash assist, so now that I actually have to, like, very purposefully make it go diagonal versus sideways, that's now difficult for me. It has to be more of a purposeful thought than it was before. Also, like, child abuse. From what I have been told of... Whoa! <laughs> From what I've been told of Binding, Binding of Isaac, that tracks... Oh. oh, no, I just wanted to take a break here. I can't dash too many times there. Oh, 
No! <laughs> hmm. I'm tempted to turn on the dash assist again. But I don't know. I don't think that will help me learn overall. Which makes me very unhappy to admit. Woo! <laughs> Checkpoint, like right here. If I could do a manual checkpoint, that would be fantastic. Just right here. Of like only dashing, I still have to get like the timing and the angle of the dashes right. This is where dash assist has spoiled me. jump a lot better. <sighs> and that. And I can... S oh, no. you can change the angle so I guess you can like you can at least this is what the dash assist was like right like you can dash in any direction that you want to Like that's a diagonal dash, but I was using the dashes. <clears throat> excuse me, I was using the dashes this before to where it would like pause the game and let you choose which direction you wanted to dash in when you would push the dash button. So I got spoiled with that, and now I'm not using it. Ah! <laughs> that part though. Ooh. And I feel like we're also getting to these parts in the game where the stamina is becoming more of a thing. Ugh. temptation of assist mode in your eyes it is there i think if i used 
assist mode right now, it would be just like invincibility. Just like full on God mode this room. <sighs> and there probably is a, a, a point where I will do that. It is nice to see yourself progress though. There's a certain level of satisfaction with that. Because even just at this beginning part, I've seen myself progress with it. Because I wasn't able to get here before, and now I'm able to get here. I don't think I'm scared to use assist. I think I want to challenge myself more than anything. I want to see, well, if I have been able to get here before, when I wasn't able to get here, can I get farther? But I feel like I am walking a fine line between I want to challenge myself to get to that point, but then I probably want to use this mode before I get frustrated. Ah. Uh, I feel like there I got to the, like, timing-wise, I got to the place where I should use dash, but then I just dashed sideways instead of diagonal. Oops. And it's so funny, too, to be like, I'm progressing. And then you do those like silly things in the very beginning. That kind of feels like when some when you're like, oh, my gosh, I can do this thing. And then someone comes over and they look at you and it's like, well, now that you're looking at me, I can't do it. And I'm going to horribly mess it up. And now I'm going to feel self-conscious about it. <laughs> That's how it feels sometimes when those you make those mistakes super early on. Whoa. Like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Oh. I think it's also interesting to hear like how people's perceptions are when when it comes to platforming games, right? Because like I can't be the only one who's never played a platformer game. And so this looks incredibly difficult because of my own perceptions and where I come from in life. But for other people who've played platforming games, this could be easy or look easy or all of those other things. And I just think that's interesting how our perception because of where we come from plays into this idea of like how we see easy or not easy or how we look at these things. Do, do the dust thing's eyes follow me? That's creepy. <gasps> I just... I. That would be an amazing assist mode thing, just to, to drop a checkpoint. I would drop one right here, like right on this chair. I dashed up. <laughs> this room is never easy for anyone. <laughs> I also wonder too, I guess then, do we sometimes say that these things are easy as a way to make ourselves feel better? Like another defense mechanism? Because that's another thing too, just because we say something is easy for us doesn't mean it's actually, uh, doesn't mean it's actually easy. You know, if these just want to hug, these dust bunnies, sprite, phlegm bunnies just want to hug, then I've been giving them a lot of hugs. Oh. Mm -hmm. I think that comes from having experienced way harder things. So kind of like if we say something is easy, maybe we're saying that 
because we've played harder games or things like that, or even like harder levels. If we've played the harder levels in Celeste, this will feel easier or harder. That was bad timing. I can see that too. I think some of these things too that may we may feel like are harder are also sometimes hard to compare. Like for example, if, if someone has played Bloodborne, how can we compare that to Celeste? Like how are these things comparable? The hotel is always harder than everything before it. So pretty difficult overall. Well, it also took a while for assist mode to be added into the game, didn't it? Oh. like this if they um, have statistics on like how many people stop at these chapters is because uh... some games like I think of um, whatever Assassin's Creed they had that was in Greece they had statistics for, like here's how many players chose um, the female um, like protagonist and the male protagonist and I wonder if they have statistics hmm <sighs> For like, how many players just stopped playing at this particular place? Oop, that's... Nah, that wasn't great. Okay, thank you. Oh, no. really wanted to give them a hug. And every time I play this game, I can't help but think how many hours speedrunners must put into this. Just like astounding. Gives me greater appreciation for that. Achievements. Um, the achievements would do would kind of tell you like how many people reached a certain point. Trophy percentage, yeah. Oh, pff, shouldn't have jumped there. <laughs> and that's true. Like the assist mode, if they had an, the assist mode option that said like. That was a silly jump. If they had the assist mode option that said, like, you could just put a check checkpoint here, that could be game-breaking as far as, like, um... Ooh, let's just restart that as far as potentially introducing a bunch of new bugs. I also wonder how difficult it is to put all of those things into console versions, too. Because then you have a whole bunch of bugs that are, like, console-specific and things like that. Bye, Mega EV. Thanks for joining us. Mm. That's a thing. to 100% Celeste. <sighs> Steve
Steam says there's only 57% get the achievement for beating chapter three. I mean, I can believe it. It just gets progressively harder. I meant to dash there. Like, that's what my brain said, but my fingers didn't do that. amount of people who don't complete like the super early achievements in games i've noticed so um a lot of games will have like an achievement for just like completing the tutorial or something like that and you'll have something like only 90 only 95 or 90 percent of people do that so it doesn't entirely surprise me sometimes that um like people don't complete stuff sometimes i think we buy games so we just like never play them because i know my steam library is a lot like that That was not great. There's an achievement for doing chapter one with no dashes. I will never get that. Some of these, some of these achievements I will never get in games. Yeah, that's true with Steam too. Like they have a bunch of sales on games that like encourages you to buy them, especially for like ridiculously cheap and then you never play them. I could never play this game and not die, obviously. Or not dash, obviously. The game presents me with an elevator shaft and I'm like, I'm gonna dash up that whole thing. turn on dash assist back on just for this where are you dash assist see if maybe that helps with this part and i still die <sighs> yeah that's the other thing oh i didn't i guess necessarily want to hear but um as I die. That's the other thing, is I could get to that part and then use invincibility. Hmm. Which I think is what I will do soon. And now it's weird to have dash assist. That's <sighs> weird now. Nope. Oh my gosh. Beating the, like, other, the, the 8-bit version is an achievement. I also couldn't do that. Can't have assistance mode in that. Oop, there we go. It feels like in the main game, the game is like very forgiving of things because it's all about like just progress and we don't care how, but the achievement seemed like it's like, oh, you want a challenge? We'll give you a challenge. Nope, that's okay. So I usually play my games for the story first. It's also why I never got the Riddler trophies and all the, oh, it's a berry, not an achievement. But that's why I never got like the Riddler trophies in the Batman games. I was like, I know myself and I know that I'm going to get frustrated doing this. And I don't want to get frustrated in a game and then like hate the game, basically. Dang it. <laughs> Challenges are what the tapes are for. That's true. I swear I know how to dash. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna turn on invisibility. <laughs> Here we are! Good, I'm not blocking it. Here we are, our award-winning presidential suite. I had to do all of that to get to the room that I paid for? Truly, it is the very definition of rustic luxury. I'll stand back and allow you to soak in the majesty. I understand it can be a lot to handle. Oh no. I don't like the mirror being here. So, what do you think? It's, uh, it's beautiful! The furniture looks ex expensive. It's very spacious. The colors are elegant. I can tell you put a lot of work into it. The text. I knew it would impress you. Yeah. So can I get a roof from here? Priorities. Roof. Elegance. Oh no. You imbecile! You're losing her! Oh, uh, I almost forgot to mention. Valued guests such as yourself <clears throat> stay in our finest accommodations at half price. The eye twitch. I don't want to stay. <clears throat> Please, Miss Madeline. Please stay. Mr. Oshiro, I've already been sidetracked too long. In front of him? Madeline, sweetie, forget this loser. This is like what adults would tell teenagers people would say to try to get kids to do drugs. Like... This is what it feels like, where they'll be like, Oh, sweetie, come do drugs. Like, this is the, like, tone or the mood of it. <clears throat> Loser. You're in denial, old man. This resort is a dump. Okay, okay, so... Before, we were the only one who, like, really saw our negative self or like our our bad side our our negative thought person but now now they are talking to mr shiro and it kind of feels like like all the negative thoughts that we had about this person are coming out <laughs> so up until now, we've had this resort that, like, is not very clean. And we didn't, like, tell them that directly. We were just like, oh, I'll help. And we, like, asked questions about it. Like, oh, are you the only one who runs this? But we didn't directly say, like, it doesn't look that great. And we just kept saying, like, I don't want to be here. Like, not in an assertive way. In a way that was... Um, I mean, we could say it was more assertive. But he kept insisting. But we didn't shit talk the place. We didn't directly say negative things about the place. And Mr. Oshiro was very insistent. This feels like instead of the negative thoughts being about us, it's almost like our negative thoughts are saying, I can't take this anymore. You need to actually be maybe honest, but maybe like you need to say the negative thoughts that you have, even if they're honest or not. Because they may not be honest. Just like when we... Um, just like when we're angry, we say things we don't mean. Like, that idea is what I feel like is happening. Where we've seen all these things about the place. Mr. Oshio just keeps insisting. Just keeps pushing us, pushing us, pushing us. And we can't get out. And we finally just, like, snap. And finally say all the things that are in our heads. That are potentially negative or that's been building up. It doesn't matter if it's true or not. That's my interpretation of this so far. This resort is a dump. No one would ever want to stay here. Like, basically, like, how can I insult you so this interaction ends so I can get out of here? Someone had to say it. She doesn't mean that. I... I'm very busy. 
Please leave, Miss Madeline. How sad. Come on, Miss Madeline. You heard the man. Oh, great. So, like, if she's calling it a dump already, let's make it worse by just, like, busting through the ceiling. That makes sense. Where would you be without me? I mean, probably further up the mountain because I didn't have to, I wouldn't have had to have run from everybody then. <sighs> so she's Gordon Ramsay. Got it. Oh, sorry. Why would she say my beautiful hotel is a dump? Oh. I mean, beauty is in the eyes of a beholder, right? How dare she insult you like that? What if she's right? Oh. Of course she's right. You couldn't even clean up without her. And this is also really hard, too, when... If we already have negative thoughts about ourselves... If we have someone else who literally says the, like, the same negative thoughts or we feel like it's an echo of the negative thoughts that we already have that feels like it hits home even more, it's almost like, oh god, they know, or it's kind of like, oh my gosh, those negative thoughts must be right because other people see them too. And it doesn't even have to be like the exact same wording or the exact same phrasing, but that makes the negative things that people say around us hit home even more because it's like, it, it echoes what we already feel about ourselves. <laughs> I tried. I'm doing my best. So we have Mr. Oshiro, who has a hard time noticing the positive things that happen, giving himself credit. And then we have... Uh, and, like, th there's, like, some pragmatic things about this, too. The hotel is in a very bad location, right? Like, the dust bunnies thing is, like, a very real thing that would keep people away. Like, there are all these, like, very logistical things that stop people from coming here, but he would have a hard time noticing that. And our negative thoughts are very much like a filter. Our negative thoughts, um, or like all of our perceptions on life, act like a filter and they change how we perceive the information that we receive from the world around him or the world around us. And so he's going to have a hard time seeing those pragmatic, very logical, not logical, but like logistical things. And then have someone come in who says negative things that are very much like what he already believes, like that would hit home really hard. Miss Madeline only wanted to help. But why was she so cruel? How dare you she how dare she insult you like that? Is this just the same stuff repeating? I think it is. <sighs> I thought we'd never get rid of him. You owe me one. Add it to the list. Leave me alone. So, we haven't gotten a lot of context on, like, why we're climbing this mountain, right? And it's like, uh, like, there's this anxiety piece that, like, the game has kind of talked about a little bit, but it's like, are we climbing this mountain to conquer, like, our general anxiety type stuff that the game has hinted at? But, or are we climbing this mountain because of her? Like, right? Because of, like, battling. Because of this, like, negative version of ourselves. Like, which are we trying to overcome or escape or those kinds of things? And I guess that makes me wonder, like, is this the first time that we've kind of seen this, like, seen, like, this negative version of ourself? And is the mountain, like, part of trying to conquer that? Or is, are we trying to, like, conquer our anxiety and all this other stuff? And this is coming out because of that, like, through the process of that? I thought you were- oh. I totally knew that this was blocking it. Totally. I thought you were so determined to keep climbing. Now, all of a sudden, you're some weirdo's therapist. I take offense to that. Or whatever. 
Why would you go away? Miss Madeline, before you go, I need to ask one question. Uh-oh. Why would you be so nice to me only to run away? Oh. So, like, why would you be nice one minute and then, like, turn around to be mean another? Oh. That's sad. So almost like, which side of you is genuine? That's sad. What did I do wrong? So like, having a hard time seeing that when we have a conversation, it takes two to tango, and like, inherently there's another person involved in a conversation. And it's like, but it must all be me. And which happens a lot when we have these negative thoughts. That's so sad. Oh, give it a break. You still don't get it. She only helps people to feed her twisted ego. Oh, so like, way to insult both of them, right? So like, that's an insult to Oshiro and Madeline, because it's basically like, well, you don't genuinely want to help people. She never cared about you. What pose is she doing? Shut up. I just wanted to help. You're both pathetic. <gasps> pathetic? You only came here to humiliate me. I won't grovel at your feet any longer. Whoa! <laughs> I have invincibility still on. I'm just morbidly curious. <laughs> I should probably turn that off. <laughs> okay. Ah, that was an instant death! Oh! Dust bunnies! That's, mm. Okay, so his lightning doesn't kill me, but he does. So I should just keep going. Boop. At least this has checkpoints. Oh, the lightning tells me where it's gonna go. That's nice, that doesn't. Oh, dang it. things. Oh! Do I have time to think, like, with Badalyn? Okay. <sighs> okay, so... Oh! So close. <laughs> ah! Nope. Ah, you have to fall perfectly on that. Nope, that's death. These wriggly things are... Oop. Mm, not cool.
Nope. Okay, so you can like Mario bop him on the head. Oops. Oh, I need to jump up. <laughs> nope. No. Getting that timing down is going to be hard. Oh. Oh. Almost. better. That was progress. That wasn't great. <laughs> Trying to speed run this game is so chill. I don't think of speed running as very chill. But that's just me. I think of that being an anxious thing. Oops. That's probably like how I think of. Oh no. How? How did I do that? That's probably like my own anxiety around getting uh, things perfect. Maybe not perfect, but like that anxiety of like, I don't want to mess this up. Oh no. <gasps> if that one, if that one was just gone. That one right there. That would be great. Oh, no. Ah, oh, dang it. Mm -hmm. 
at least after having died so many times here, it's less stressful. Oops. So now I'm trying to think about how to go about ooh, getting the second one, the second like shield thing, since I... No! It's right there! So the first one is just a matter of making it happen. I know, like, logistically how to do it. Oops. There's so many mechanics to manage for this. Ugh. Too. Oops. Oops. <laughs> Fell right into Oshiro. So down is not a great place to go because I can't go up. Ooh. Well. Yeah, if I... So I need to get right above the shield and then just, like, fall into it. And I'm trying to figure out how to get the next one then. I think I'm finding... I can't go below. The below one looks easier, but then... I can't jump above him if he is there. This is like logically what I'm um, thinking. Because I keep trying. Whoop. Ah, I keep trying to go below, but then he's there. mechanics to juggle to try to get the shields plus the wiggly things like take away you can't backtrack to stuff Ugh. and then you're juggling him plus everything like all uh, this plus everything else <laughs> plus I have the infinite dashes that does open up a lot of possibilities Ooh. Ah. Oh no, that was the farthest I've gotten. Oh no. Yeah, I think I need to get better at baiting him places. That wasn't baiting. Hey, Ali. Yo! Oops. Nope! I didn't mean to dash straight. If you just press the dash button without a direction, it just dashes... It just dashes. Okay, this is what I wanted. Nope, not that though.
Ooh. Ah, oh, dang it. I got too high up and I couldn't see where I was. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to get better at baiting him to be where I want him to be. Like that. Cool. Oh no. So I need to move when the lightning is there. Oh. I didn't want that. Mm. Okay. <gasps> no! <laughs> oh. I should have stayed down. There's so much timing and like knowing where you're going to be that comes into it too. Oh, I was just right into it. giant vampire head I don't think I'm stressed out anymore right there's like some amount of exposure to this ah, I've seen it um, eat me so much ha oh ugh. I've seen it eat me so much it's not stressed out it's just a matter of like actually putting these things in my head I know what I need to do and like actually making it happen. Like that right there. <laughs> like my brain knows what to do, but actually making that happen is entirely different. <sighs> it's like anything with like horror games too. Like once you've, no, once you've seen the monster, it loses its scare. So the first couple times of doing this, I think it's a lot of like panic with it. Cause like, oh my gosh, I need to run away. Oh, <laughs> that one was different. And now it's more like, okay, all these things that I think I've logically figured out I need to do, oh, I need to make that happen. Scenario, I just turn the invisibility or invincibility back on. 
Oh no, not them. I think I need to get better at the baiting too. Like that feels like one of the biggest things is like getting him to be where I need him to be. So then I just focus on the other mechanics. And sometimes I try to do that and I end up jumping on him. Ooh. Mm. And then that like changes where I am, which isn't what I want. <laughs> Cause I think that's why I've died a couple times too. I've bounced on his head, like later on towards the second shield and that um, like moves you somewhat. Ah. So yeah, if I bait him right there and then he goes across and then I jump on his head, usually that ends up knocking me into the little dust bunny things. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> hey, Mega Eevee. Welcome back. Oh, you're kidding me. That was so close. That was... <sighs> so close. Like, I can't be mad, but it was so close. I'm not going to destroy my controller. Because if I got there once, that means I can do it again. I didn't want to do that. Oops. A dash there. Ah. 
No. <sighs> I need to dash into the ceiling. I don't know if Madeline's head is okay after that. I did! Also very Halloweeny. Fluffy, it protects her. Like, when you wear too much hairspray from the 70s or 80s or whatever time period that is, <sighs> that's like a helmet. I really want to see if I can get over that. I can't. There's no good spot when you go down below like that. close. So close. <laughs> I do not think I am getting that strawberry. That strawberry can stay there. Oops. <laughs> oh. Oh! I didn't think I was going to get that. strawberry. Aren't all strawberries a little holy because they have their seeds on the outside and it looks like holes? Oh! Oh! No! <sighs> Ew! that 
describes why it's strawberries? Is it just like, that's just what they like? Or the game devs like? Oh. Oh no. Strawberry just cuz. I mean, checks out. <gasps> There's no good place for that. Dash sideways. <laughs> Strawberries are the best berry. I don't know. There are some good berries out there. Like cherries. I think someone said that. Oh, no. <laughs> Wouldn't they be frozen if they're out here, though, on this mountain where, like, it's all snowy and stuff? <laughs> They're so holy they never freeze. What about the ones that are flying? What's about what about with them? Oh no. Are they like holy in a different way? holy with like a, a sprinkling of holy This looks awful. <sighs> oh, this is bullshit. do the other one. Oh, I don't know how I did that. I think I just have to keep moving forward. Dash spam. Yeah, that's how I feel. Oh, oh I slipped, apparently. I 
think I dashed into him. Nope. Ugh, I didn't want to dash up. Dash and fall. Because <laughs> I want to dash up. I don't... I don't want to dash down. Stop. Stop. <sighs> is this like ghost rules where you can't leave your house? Because I don't feel like it is. Oops. I feel like this is partly Sonic rules. Gotta go fast. Oops. But not run into things. Which, now that I think about it, is weird that Sonic doesn't do that. I could just keep dashing over the top of everything until that one section. That feels like cheating. <laughs> Dash spam to the sequel. I can't even see where she is. Oh no, now I have to go down. <sighs> You're, I'm not made to go up this high, so you can't go this high. Just, nope, you stay down there. You, you, I died. I don't know what I hit. <laughs> you stay down there. I died again. <laughs> I can dash downward, but I have to see where I am first. And, like, be able to mentally process where I am. <laughs> I hit a dust bunny. That sounds about right. like the safer dash at this point oh until that because like up is how I get away from him I feel like that's what my brain is doing until that oops I forgot that the dust bunny prevents me from going up the entire way across. Oops. Dust bunnies are cute until you die from them. Is there a tough segment after this? I mean, couldn't we call the entire game a tough segment? No! I am gonna turn on dash assist so I can fall strategically. 
And now I'm gonna probably forget how it works. Oh. This is weird now. I can't see the buttons. <laughs> Too high up. Oh. with grace. I don't think I'm... Oh, uh, get away from me. All of you, get away from me. Just let me be antisocial in peace, please. I don't like... I don't like the dash assist anymore. I'll just use my infinite dashes. And fall with grace. close. Friendship ended with dash assist. Yeah, I'm, I'm ghosting dash assist and leaving them on red. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that was close. Oh, I went right into his face. <clears throat> Just leave me alone, please. Oh, I thought that was the one at the ledge. It is not. This works. Oops. <sighs> dash assist is, is a very much a double-edged sword. Like once you hit the button, you're definitely committed to dashing somewhere, but then it's not, <sighs> then you may not always want to dash, but you're already committed to it. Like that's the downside of it. Curse you! <laughs> Invincibility is my new bestie, but I don't... You know, I I don't want to, to have that... I don't want to be that close with Invincibility, right? It's like, you know, I've been burned before, and I just... You know, I want to take my time. I don't want to be burnt again. Ooh. Dashing, panic dashing. <sighs> that was so much panic dashing. And that last dust bunny is rude. They make rude choices. Oh, panic dashing! I keep expecting there to be ledges, and there are not ledges. <sighs> this is not how this level is made to be played. down there is the like I'm ah, actually gonna do the level as intended I'm not it's gonna be my way or invincibility
Ugh. Dash assist would be good for the last part. It's just getting to the last part that isn't great with dash assist. I really just like infinitely jumping. Except for that. This isn't difficult. I was I was already doing this. <laughs> oh. Okay. So I have to fall with grace. Oh, oh, not fall too much with grace. Not too much grace. Just a little grace. Just a little grace. Rude. <sighs> Rude. Them there. <gasps> well, I did it. I I did it. <sighs> Infinite dashes is. I don't think I can let this one go. It's definitely. Oh. Spam four. What would the tag line of that one be? Back for revenge. Ha 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 ha. No. It's like the one time I don't dash. Oh, it's like a sunset. And then I die. <gasps> oh! I'm okay with that. Nah, I'm not okay with that. That was bad. <sighs> that 
is death down there. There is death. I forgot I can't just like slowly inch over to the edge because death follows. Oh, that was bad. <sighs> this is such a long screen. Oops. still boggles my mind that this is something that people speedrun. Oops. <clears throat> I mean, that is popular enough to speedrun that there's like an in-game counter for it. those things that you do because why not but just like it's the time the sheer time involved with it that astounds me oh 
Ah. Oh. like which games are popular to uh, to um speedrun ah man it's a whole kind of community within itself ah i didn't want to be on the jumpy thing Oh yeah, Mario games for speedrunning. Also, like speedrunning. Oh man, games. <laughs> Souls is speedrun too. I suppose any game can be speedrun, technically. people speed run like the Pokemon games too, which is like very RNG heavy. Bunny commits tax evasion, had a built-in speed run timer. I've seen that. Steam keeps trying to tell me, you'll like this game. And it's like, I know nothing about this. <gasps> Every game has been speed run, yeah. But there are also some that just seem to be, I think, like, more talked about and, like, better suited for it. I mean, oh, kind of like, um... how Celeste again like has that timer built in. also a lot in the speedrun community oh, from what I know about it about like being very anti-cheat so I think they the speedrunning community also likes games that make it easy to tell if cheating has been done oh. Oh. So just practice. Ah. 
Also still boggles my mind that there are deathless runs. Oh, I meant to fall down. I do love that satisfying little pop of like the Mario. Not that though. I do think this is a good time to take a little break though. For like five minutes. Before I die a few more times and then just turn on invincibility. Sound good? Welcome back. I see the player you mean. Just gonna take like a five minute break.
Well, I am back, but I don't know if it's actually been five minutes. Having snow and hot cocoa sounds amazing. Hot cocoa in general sounds amazing, by the way. <laughs> Boiling up some craft dinner, I like the macaroni. Welcome back. Tapioca milk tea, like boba tea. That does sound good. Ready to face the bunnies? No, I don't think I'm ever ready to face the bunnies. They are not as cute as the bunnies of um, Amori, but I mean, they're not awful. Zara, it's okay that you didn't eat anything. I didn't either. Welcome back yourself, Maga or Mega Eevee. Boba sounds really good. I like the boba that isn't like the little tapioca things. They have boba here that are like um like flavored stuff. I don't know how to describe it. Um I think technically it's like like seaweed stuff. It's just like little bursts of flavor. Those are my favorite little bobas. Yeah, welcome back. Popping boba. Yeah, I don't know what it is, technically. It's not little um, tapioca ones, though. Like, they have a mango one, and you just, like, burst it in your mouth, and it's like, boom, flavor. Yeah, it could, it's like bubble tea. It's basically tea, but I guess, like, the traditional tapioca kind is... They're just, like, these little tapioca balls that are in there. Um, and they have this really big straw, so you, like, slurp it up. And they're just, you know, chewy tapioca things. The ones that I'm talking about, though, um, they're the same size as the little tapioca balls, but you, like, you eat, you know, you burst them in your teeth, and it's just, like, boom, mango flavor, or whatever kind of flavor, too. I really like it, because I like sweet things. Or popping boba. I mean, like, I'm sure there are all kinds of names for it, too. A lot of places here just call it boba tea. Some of them too have like almost like little candies, like instead of the the, bu the boba, it almost looks like if you took like Twizzlers and like chopped them up into small bits and put them in. And then it, because the straws are so big, they just like up. Again, I like it because it's like a really sweet tea. <laughs> <coughs> Because I like anything sweet, inherently. I have the world's biggest sweet tooth. <laughs> Watching YouTube has messed me up on what things are called in Canada versus America. I can see that. Um, I can see that especially if you don't live in America. My impression is that America has kind of taken over a lot of media. But I think bubble tea is just called different things. Or boba tea. Even I just said it differently. It's just called different things in different places. I imagine a lot of it is just also what that particular store decides to call it. Right? Because if I open up a store, I want to call it something that customers will recognize. Because why would I go to a place where I don't recognize what anything is called? Right? There's a certain amount of like... Uh, recognizability with that kind of marketing but also I think some places look at it as if I call it something original then that sets me apart from other places um so <clears throat> excuse me I think that that's also an element of of like marketing sometimes when it comes to this kind of stuff is like how can I call it something where people know what it is but then like I'm the only one who calls it that thing Z versus Z. Yeah, so when we're talking to, I mean, that's also this idea of like America versus other countries for what we call things. Uh, the last letter of the alphabet, Z. Uh, like Americans call it Z, but other countries 
it's not just like Canada. I guess if, if Canadians call it Zed, um, that call it Zed, it's other countries too. Because I think in the UK, they often say Zed. I think in like in France, you know, it's Zed. So there's a lot of other countries that call it that. I've commented in videos before that some other kind of differences are this idea of what do we call the first floor versus the ground floor. Those are some other like cultural differences in how we call things too. I look at that stuff as when I hear stuff like that, I look at it like, oh, this maybe like tells me about where a game is made more than anything else. I've also um, some other things I've noticed from other YouTubers is um, like clockwise and counterclockwise, like Americans call it counterclockwise. And I've heard some people um, call it anti-clockwise. Um, also like aluminum versus aluminium. I look at all this stuff as just like more interesting, all of these different cultural perspectives. Because all of this impacts like how we see the world around us, but I think it also impacts how we see other people, right? So if someone is trying to describe something or and they spell something to me and they say Z versus Z, do people make fun of them for that? Or is it just like something that we move on from? I think that's also a cultural thing too, as far as, and probably not countrywide, but that's a factor too that I also, I find myself trying to look at or, or observe as far as, do we accept these cultural differences or do we use it as a reason to push people out? Yeah, Zed. I only knew that Zed was a thing because um, I took like French classes in school and you know, that's part of like the French alphabet that I learned. So when I would hear, um, you know, like someone from the UK um, say Zed, it didn't seem that weird to me. Cause it's like, oh, that's just, this is a thing. Yeah, Xi'an. Um, there's there's that inclination to say, haha, you said the word wrong. And I think that's... I think that's also... <coughs> that's, that's hard. Um, excuse my cough. That's also a hard thing, too, because then I think... We're hesitant to do things because or say things or speak up because we don't want to get it wrong. I think of that a lot when we learn other languages. It's like, I don't want to get hatred, basically, or I don't want to get shit on because I'm saying it wrong. Um, even though I always look at that as learning a second language or a third language or, or whatever is incredibly difficult to begin with. So like <laughs> props to you for learning any amount of language that is different from from a native tongue. But it's a lot of that kind of like black and white thinking of you're right versus wrong kind of a thing. Um, but then that stops us from doing something different because we don't want to get it wrong. And then like we see being wrong is awful. <laughs> color versus color versus color. Um, what's another one that I use a lot with my work? Um, <sighs> canceled. Um, like if an appointment is canceled or whatever, I have to write that in my notes <clears throat> and I've actually Googled it. Like, how do you spell cancel? And there's one version with one L and one version with two L's. And I think I Googled it once and Google's like, both versions are correct, but like in America, this version is used more. All of that stuff too. Gray versus gray. It's a lot of, a lot of that stuff. And I don't, and I've noticed too, like with um, spelling things like autocorrects, they'll often correct it. Like my, my like Google, whatever spelling things will correct it to like the American way. And it's like, but the, but Google also says the other way isn't technically incorrect. Color versus color are annoying because I've coded programs before and I'm supposed to call it color, but the program language makes me spell it a certain way. That's interesting. Like, how do we determine which one is correct, too, is something I find interesting. Hmm. Hey, Evil Enderman, thank you for that. 
Hmm. Language and our perception of things is always interesting and fascinating. <clears throat> um, having said all of that, though, I am going to switch back to the game. All right, I'm going to try a few more times and then I'm going to turn on invincibility. It's like my brain is taking a second to process what I'm doing. I do know how to panic dash, though. Oh. oh. Austrian versus Germany. German is a whole topic. Aren't there um, potentially differences between like different parts of the country too when it comes to that? I imagine especially between like West and East Germany, all history considered. <clears throat> different historical context, but I picture that a lot like <clears throat> a lot like um, Southern American um, accents versus non-Southern accents. Oh. <clears throat> ah! Such a satisfying little pop. I wish he lasted longer staying gone when you plop him. <clears throat> All right, I am going to do invincibility. It is time. <laughs> I can just run through all of this. On the head more when I don't actually have to. I'm just dash through all of this. <laughs> Mr. Oshiro, stop! Whoa! I just wanted to help! Good thing I can dash infinitely. Oh, he landed. Okay. <laughs> I've decided to close the hotel for repairs. That's probably a very good idea. The second floor plumbing is leaking. Right. Because that's the reason why. Not like the dust or everything else <laughs> the library is in complete disarray not to mention the hole in the ceiling of the presidential suite so wait is this if we are get myself a cough drop if we are saying i am closing this down for any period of time, right? So, like, what we got from the journal note thing that we found was that this character, like, everybody else left for... I, I can't remember if they said it was, like, because it was in disarray before. But this character chose to stay and, like, died here. So, if they're finally admitting, like, that they can't... That they're going to close, is that admitting that they need help that they actually can't do it anymore like almost like is this admitting the things that they couldn't admit before please just leave me alone it feels sad Oh, <laughs> the little 
the spray in the background. Five hundred and ninety six just with that. Yeah, he was in denial that the resort was closed, and now he's acknowledging it just a little. Which can be sad, right? Like, hence, like, why it feels sad. But the fact that there's acknowledgement there still feels, like, better, I guess. Because we can't change. We can't do something different until we acknowledge what's been happening. Deathless, let's go. You're funny. That's funny. That's not happening. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> Climbing tip, low in energy and a pinch, jumping away from the walls doesn't consume stamina. That's fantastic. <laughs> oh, this is pretty. I still have invincibility on. Leave Deathless to the speedrunners. I'm okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. I am used to this idea of like I'll work within like what I feel like I know and other people can work within what they feel like they know. That's cool. Speedrunners can do speedrunny things. <laughs> so when's your deathless 100% all golden berries run coming? Ha! Funny. That's funny. Oh, they're cute. I mean like I can just dash infinitely but it what are you? Whoa! Oh, spikes! Go! I am... I don't think I am letting go of my friendship with infinite dashes. I just... I'm saying that now. I think that we are BFFs. And that BFF status is not going away. I don't know what the orb does. Oh! Bye. <gasps> I like the water. I like how it changes the music. Those are Bob's cousin, Bill. Fucking Bob, man. You know, I like Bob. I visit. How the fuck did you get up here? Ha! How? I... This face. I admire this face. She's a speedrunner. <laughs> She's the one who has the no death speed run. <laughs> that look though of like the fuck. Bob uh, is the running joke of all the spiky boys, all the like spikes, because I can't just admit that I hit them all the time. I have to have my own defense mechanism. Kind of like how people are like, it's my controller, only I'm saying that I visited the Spikes, and they're named Bob. And Bob has a family and all these other things, right? Imagine her saying there's a path. That would be so incredibly frustrating to go through all of this. And then for her to be like, you just walked around. Oh, great. You again. Well, well, I didn't expect to see you up here. Why don't- why do your eyes blink at different times? That's weird. I don't like it, that's unsettling. Please stop. I'm glad you're still in one piece. I mean, me too. So you made it through the hotel, did you meet Mr. Oshiro? It's like she knows all this stuff. That like... Is up here, and she's just like, 
you'll just meet all this stuff. And then she's like, speed runs it up here? Oh, I met him all right. God, that one looks pissed. Chased me out of there. After I cleaned up a bunch of junk for him. I mean, like, you didn't have to, though. <laughs> that laugh. <laughs> oh, that sounds like a fun morning. <sighs> the Shiro is a lost soul, dear. Hmm. How so? What does that mean? Like, in a, he's a ghost way? Or in a, like, he can't help, get help kind of way? Because that latter, mm, that one doesn't sound great. That place is much more than just a hotel to him. Well, we knew that, right? Like, why else stay and die for it, right? Don't make him your project. So kind of like he has to decide to change for himself and we can't change other people. So don't like, don't stop what you're doing for yourself just for someone else. If they haven't made that choice for themselves to change, grow all of that other stuff. Kind of these, this idea of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Madeline sounds as angry as you can sound when your voice is super high pitched, like you've had helium. You know what I think? <laughs> so hard with that face of hers, but the really high-pitched voice. I think this mountain drove both of you crazy. Like, this feels like Madeline is just, like lashing out though, because she's like upset at how difficult this has been. Which is understandable, but also like doesn't feel the most realistic, too. I mean, like, it feels realistic. But like, I don't think these people caused the mountain to be this hard. Madeline. Yep. You know, you're not the first person to say that. Well, it, what, it, what does that tell you? <laughs> Maybe you're right. I just, what? How would I know if I were crazy? <sighs> that feels like a loaded question in so many ways. Uh... I mean, first off, crazy, not a great word. I don't like that word. Like, if we if we look at a word and say that, like, there's there's negative emotions that come with the word, it's probably not a great word. Um, but so like the, that word by itself is not great. But if we take that away, like, putting that aside, how would I know if I were crazy? When we were talking about mental health, mental health often means... I am keeping this laugh playing while I talk. Just, like, brace yourself for it. Um, mental health, like, usually something that comes hand-in-hand hand with mental health stuff is this concept of having a hard time seeing things... Um, how do I explain this? Having a hard time seeing things. I want to say the way they are, but uh, <clears throat> the concept that the way that we talk about it, like clinically is in like when we're talking to other therapists or doctors or things like that is insight. Insight is in like being able to see things um, um, accurately or, or that kind of stuff is in like not having denial about it. Not, not that like that kind of stuff is in like, if I am, having a conversation with someone that I, uh, like a client, and I kind of, you know, maybe point out to them that, you know, maybe the people around them are toxic, or um, maybe these, the ways that they're trying to cope are not working for them. If they don't see that themselves, that would be like having a hard time with insight. And inherently, when we're talking about mental health, something that often goes hand in hand with this, with mental health is having a hard time with insight. Um, that's like the very clinical term um, that's not like how we talk about it, like in, in the real world, so to speak. Um, but what that means is that we often don't know if we're struggling, which makes mental health stuff often a bit of a paradox, not to this extent 
as far as the phrasing that Granny uses, if we're calling her Granny. But it means that we may not know that we're feeling depressed, for example, because of that insight piece. We may not know that we're anxious because of that, that insight piece. There are a bunch of other factors to this too, as far as like, how do we define this? How does society talk about it? Those are other factors as well, but that insight piece is also a factor in this as well. So when Granny says, how would I know if I were crazy? That's what comes to my mind is the fact that mental health is often so connected with this concept of like, how much can we see this stuff about ourselves, basically? I feel like that's the simplest way that I can kind of describe that concept of, of insight and like how it's connected to mental health. But that that's often something that kind of comes up for us, kind of this idea like if other people can see this stuff, but we can't, that idea. I hope that makes sense. Some of these concepts are very hard to describe. Um, sometimes they're things that even as as therapists, we take a long time to really kind of talk to a supervisor about, to learn more about ourselves, to see how it plays out in the real world, that kind of thing. Meanwhile, she's still laughing the entire time I talked about that. The way I see it, the mountain can't bring out anything that isn't already in you. It's like the mountain didn't cause anything, is what she's saying. Her blinking unnerves me. But you gotta be a few crows short of murder to live up here in the first place, right? That is always an interesting way that we talk about crows. Like, a gaggle of crows, a group of crows, not technically a gaggle, is a murder. How weird is that? <laughs> Man, I was like, I don't, I don't give a shit. What are you even talking about? Oh, I'm just rambling like the old bat I am. <laughs> she used a lot of animal analogies too. I don't know if that's just like using analogies or on purpose. Are you ready to give up? I know a shortcut back to your car. I mean, so do I. It's like the menu. Bye. -bye. Back off, lady. It reminds me of like talk to the hand because the face ain't home leave a message after the tone i can't believe i remembered that i'm heading for the summit sometimes it's hard to tell the difference between stubbornness and determination isn't it that's true you remind me of myself when i was young how does that feel to hear when there's someone that we don't like and they're like i was just like you that feels like our parents. If our parents are like, I was like, oh, I used to look like you. Or when people tell us that we look like our parents or something like that. But if we don't like our parents or how our parents look and we're like, huh, that, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> Good luck and mind the wind. That's fantastic. You don't get many visitors up here, do you? Nope, can't say I do. I don't mind the solitude, though. Sometimes I think I should live in solitude, too. I really tried to get through to Mr. Oshiro. I wanted to help him. Oshiro needs to move on from that hotel. But it's not going to happen on your schedule. Is that why he's dead and still there? So it can happen on his timeline? And it doesn't help that you've got something to prove. So, like, Madeline is on her timeline because she has something to prove, and Oshiro has to go at his at a pace that works for him. Which makes sense, because that's how we all are. Don't you get lonely in that little cabin? I have friends, dear. Are they the crows? I may be crazy, but I'm not a hermit. Sorry. Did... Is that the first time that Madeline's apologized to her? I didn't mean to assume. When I was younger, I couldn't imagine staying in one place for this long. But then I found this mountain. I knew right away that it would be my home. What's so special about it? The mountain shows you who you really are. Whether you're ready for it or not. So what is that? Wait, that doesn't make sense. Because Mr. Oshiro... If the mountain shows you who you really are, then that would imply that it's showing Mr. Oshiro as he really is. But then at the same time, 
Granny is saying that Mr. Oshiro can change, he just has to change on his own time, so that doesn't make sense. <sighs> it keeps me honest. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Help yourself before you help others. Yeah. But also, like, our version of help isn't always everybody... Everybody else's version of help. This wind is awful. Oh! Oh, I hate it. earlier about how the game has wind stuff. I didn't expect this. Meet the wind. If I wanted to meet the wind, I'd watch Avatar. Like... Whoa! Well, I can just dash into it. I am not getting that strawberry. I still don't know what the bubbles do. What do the pink clouds do? Woo! Oh, pink clouds go away like assholes. Well, I could just infinitely dash up to the top. Oh, no. Hi, Bob! <laughs> really hate to see you under these times. These unprecedented times. I would love to meet you under precedented times. Oh no! The wind's now the other way! That's... Mm, that's not okay. Oh! Oh! <laughs> I think you can easily clear the entire level with infinite dashes. I do think that helps. Ah! Except I keep meeting Bob. Ah! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I can't imagine doing this without the infinite dashes. I'm just gonna leave that strawberry there. <sighs> the next chapter is Bob's character arc, The Betrayal. So was Bob ever loyal? Oh, f <sighs> Are the bubbles like, um... The kind of celestial things where they refill my dash, my dash, like they would if I didn't already have infinite dash. <sighs> Bob is back in business. That's alliteration. Celestial. Green bubble like a dash. Okay, so I'm just not seeing that, like, mechanic thing because I already have, like, infinite dashes. What do you do? <gasps> ah, sorry. This would be awful without infinite dashes. Bubbles are like the dash assist on a time limit. They do not give your dash back. Oh, okay. So I'm just, like, not seeing that as much. If I just, like, don't need it. It's like this. I hate the wind changing. <gasps> oh. 
are you? Oh my gosh, are you birds? <gasps> That's cute. <sighs> How do I like this level? I love this level because I have Dash Assist. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <sighs> Whoa. I don't know if I should have been on that. Okay, this feels like a lot of places that I can go. The last time we had a lot of places that I could go was like the Celestial level. And then things changed and then my alter ego came out and I don't like that. Okay, so there's Strawberry there. I can probably get that one. That's it? That's all I'm really looking at? Oh! I don't know what to do with that one on the very far right, but that can just stay there. I think. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a lot calmer. I don't know how I feel about it. <laughs> no entry for you. Ew. Uh. Oh, I can't go back at all. Um, so the one off to the, yeah, there was that berry. I'm assuming you just have to go over here then. <gasps> Infinite dashes prevent you from learning how the blocks work. This definitely won't be a problem for later chapters. No, why would that be a problem for later chapters? Uh! I mean, like, you stand on them and they move. It was that one off to the very right that I didn't get. And I don't know how that works. I'm assuming that if you stand on or touch either side. Like that, that is like a thing. Ah! Oh! Do not, Bob. Go! <sighs> I didn't see the block or the the light colored side on either one for that one that I couldn't see. Oh yeah, I can just like actually hold on to things. Okay. There are more intricacies than that. I, I am assuming so. Um, why am I here again? Oh, that's death. That's also death. <sighs> okay, well, I got that. 
Um, I already got the one on the right because now I can't go there anymore. Oh, as soon as I get them, I can't go back. Oh, because these are all blocked off now. So I can go <laughs> as an arrow. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, let's go do this. Huh. Yeah, like this one. Doesn't have a light colored thing. So how do I. Oh. Whoa. I'm just dash up here. Whoa. This is all for a strawberry. Just... Oh, was that progressing? Okay. This... I really like Infinite Dash. You know? Out of everything, Infinite Dash is my favorite. <sighs> oh, oh, oh. Hmm. Except for when I can't get something because of Infinite Dash. Then it's not my favorite. Well, I don't need the bubbles either. Oh no! Oh, that's too many spikes. That's that's. Oh, that's a lot. The dash is something I'd call broken in this area. No, it's not broken. It's dashes. Get it? Get it? Okay. Now it's a silly joke. Oh! Ah! I mean, like, it's all fun in games. <laughs> so I still die. <laughs> oh! I just, like, walk off the cloud. Bob brought his friends. Bob brought his buddies. Some alliteration. <sighs> that's a small, that's a small space to get into. <gasps> no! <sighs> I'll look Bob's grandchildren. Then Bob? has a huge family. That's a lot of spikes. That's not like grandchildren, that's a legacy. Bob's, Bob's big, beautiful brain. These are tongue teasers. Duh. Bob. You bountiful bastard, you stop. <laughs> This is hard. As I use infinite ashes. Mm. What if Bob is like the whale Humphrey from Amori? Mm. That's not pleasant. Tongue teasers. Tongue twisters. Whatever phrase we want for that kind of thing. Whew. What kind of spiky, windy landscape is this one? Does the wind change mid-thing? 
That's awful. That's awful. That should stop. <sighs> I like how the music is all like calm and soothing. Meanwhile, the wind is like psh, chaos. <sighs> no wind. Really? <gasps> oh my gosh. <sighs> It's a lot of spikes. <laughs> you need a mod that puts happy little faces on the spikes. Go! Just, just go back, go back, go back, go back. Oh, <laughs> you have to fight so hard against that wind, and then you go back on the screen. No wind. No wind. Wind. No end. Wow. <sighs> Wait, I have to get that thing, don't I? No? <sighs> oh, okay. Oh, that's death. I thought I would just like go down to the bottom screen again because I didn't get the shield. <gasps> don't crumble. <sighs> Wait, how do I get that shield thing? Because I didn't get it all. Weird. Okay, I guess it is not needed. No! No! Stop. No, no. Just let me climb this in peace, please. In peace. <sighs> it would have moved a block that you went past the infinite dashes. Oh, okay. Well, then, never mind. The infinite dashes does feel so unfair in this, but I'm not changing it. This wind. Oh, I'll try for the strawberry. Don't change the wind on me. Don't you don't don't you do it. Huh. I think this is the area I got the most strawberries because the infinite dash is just ridiculous. She can't even walk against it. Oh, you can't see because of my face. Oh, no, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Oh, no, no. Rude. Most strawberries least, least deaths so far. I I did get squished. Yep. So I have to get the shield thing to get that my escape route to go down. And then then I can do the block thing. No! That's death. You actually have to do the level the intended way. Yep. Yep, that's why it was hard. Mm-hmm. You could ignore mechanics all the way until now. <gasps> oh! 
spiky, spiky boy got me. win and just keep running into it <laughs> this wind is a bit much Maybe! Maybe the dash assist. But now I'm not used to it, so. <gasps> okay, just go back up. Just go. Oh! Okay. Now we just like chill out here, right? Until the block. No, we have to be on like this. Yeah, we have to be on the side of the block. <gasps> okay. an option. I hit it. <laughs> Curse you designers for making me do the game as intended. Duh! <laughs> Devs, that's the word my brain was looking for. Ho, 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 no. Oh, that's, that's a choice. This is very, um, like 80s synth music. You know what? I'll just chill out here for the block to come back. Oh! Ah! <laughs> so close. I say that not knowing what's on the right-hand side of the screen, so was I so close? I don't know. Oh! Mm. Mm. It's a lot of spiky boys here. Ooh. That's that's also that that's also an option. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Not as intended. But oh, that's no. What are you? No, 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 stop. Stop. Stop that. What are you? <sighs> Gaming, let's go. As I just skip all the mechanics. <laughs> go! Snowball to the face. I guess it's better than the knee. Then my adventuring days would be over. This has definitely been the easiest level to grab the strawberries at. Only because I'm playing in a way the game did not originally intend. I did just get pelted. It's like when you get clotheslined and you're like, whoa. Infinite dashes are not in, not intended for this level. Oh, 
oh, so away from the spikes, please. I used to be a mountain climber like you, but then I took a snowball to the knee as the wind yeeted me off the cliff while I was reading that. Oh, no, 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 you stay high above that. High, high, oh, it stopped. The wind stopped. Huh. Now I'm suspicious when it stops. Madeline, wait up! Oh, is it Theo? How did you get up here? Without infinite dashes. <laughs> Nailed it! <laughs> Theo, are you all right? Oof, yeah. Just give me a sec. A gondola. I've always wanted to ride one of these. Is that is that what they're called? A gondola? He's also a speedrunner. This feels unfair. I'm competing against every speedrunner. This is this is my first time playing this. I'm not a speedrunner. It looks pretty old, but maybe it still works. That doesn't feel safe. I don't see any other way to cross this chasm. Let's do it. This lever looks important. Oh, Theo. You sweet summer child. Oh. Easy every time. I was probably a gondola operator in a past life. Do you think this thing is safe? I'm, I'm sure it's fine. How to shake out with Oshiro? You were right. I shouldn't have tried to help him. Hmm. You're like, was that the lesson though? Or like the thing? I hate to say I told you so, but... Yeah, yeah. Should have listened to you. You didn't get hurt, that's what matters. Like, Oshiro still got something from that. I can barely breathe. Oh, yeah, like the... Uh, the mountain. Altitude difference, that's the word. Okay, if we don't get a selfie on this thing, we're gonna regret it. <sighs> I can't even see the ground through the mist. Oh, please don't have this fall. How high up are we? <laughs> Less panicking, more posing. Yes, because that's what we all need to hear when we have anxiety. Just less panicking. And then the anxiety just leaves our bodies. <laughs> what was that? <clears throat> huh, looks like we stalled out. She looks anxious. This is really bad. Well, it's- you called it a chasm! It's a chasm! That we're stalling over! <clears throat> Maybe- don't touch it. Don't know what it does. Don't- Don't touch important things that you don't know what they do! Theo! Don't. Well, that's not good. <sighs> this feels familiar. It's like fear lines of a panic attack. <clears throat> no, this really isn't good. Madeline, you cool? No, I mean like this is a panic attack is what I'm guessing this is. Like how do you show Something that is vague and hard to show. Um, in a very visual form. I mean, this makes sense. Yeah, I just... No, I'm not cool. It takes a lot to admit, too. Especially to a stranger. I can't breathe. You're having a panic attack. So, what is his background that he recognizes that first off? Because I feel like not everybody recognizes that. 
I feel like usually we have someone, either like we struggle with anxiety or a friend or a family member struggles with anxiety for us to have some like recognition, for us to put like that two and two together. <laughs> Why would you think it's a good idea to ride this stupid thing? Come on, don't take this out on me. Stay with me here. My grandpa taught me a trick for this. Okay, so like his grandpa like put that two and two together for him. Close your eyes. Picture a feather floating in front of you. See it? Okay. Your breathing keeps that feather floating. Oh, this is interesting. Very... Um, very mindful. Like, it's a different way to practice breathing. Um, or deep breathing. Um, we can be told by other people, like, just breathe. And that can be very dismissive. It can feel like... Like, the sarcastic part of me looks at that like, of course I'm fucking breathing, right? Like, my brain, or like, not my brain, but like, yes. Like, my brain and my lungs do that automatically. But there is some practicality to that, because when we are feeling anxious, what ends up happening is we end up taking shallower breaths than usual. We hold our breath. We focus more on the inhale than the exhale. It's just like a lot of <gasps> type breathing. Um, and so there is some practicality, some, some practical usefulness for... Uh, deep breathing when we feel anxious, when we have an anxiety attack, when we have a panic attack. So it's kind of like how that person tells us as far as like how well that advice is received, I feel. And deep breathing often goes hand in hand with mindfulness, meditation, that kind of thing when we're working on anxiety. And a lot of that is focusing on the now. When we're feeling anxious, a lot of our anxiety thoughts are what if? What if something negative happens in the future? In this case, it might be like, what if we fall? What if we die? Those are, aren't literally happening right now. So it's a future thought. It's a future possible thing that could or could not happen. But it's not how we see it. In the moment, our anxiety can, our anxiety lies to us. Think of it like, like battling, right? Our anxiety lies to us. Our anxiety convinces us that these are not possibilities in the future. First off, we get convinced that these are certainties. But then we also get convinced that they are happening right now. So then what ends up happening is we act as though they're happening right now and that impacts our current moment. And then sometimes what ends up happening too is we end up planning, preparing, scheduling, that kind of thing to, to again, like react as though this is a, a current thing that is happening. So the way that mindfulness and meditation and breathing work is they bring us back to the current moment. They help us kind of focus in on the fact of what is happening right now. And there are a lot of different ways that this can happen or, or that mindfulness, meditation, grounding, all of these different things can work. Sometimes it's about, uh, I think of it a bit like an umbrella concept. These are umbrella terms, umbrella concepts. And sometimes it's about finding which of the, which things underneath this umbrella concept work for you. Because we're all individual people. Some things we kind of gravitate to more than others. Kind of like journaling. There are some parts of journaling that some people like more than others. Some ways of journaling that people like more than others. And so there are tons of different ways to do these things that are still very individual, very different that we kind of gravitate to more than others. For deep breathing, for example, there's a, a deep breathing concept where you put your hand on your chest or one hand on your chest, but one hand on your stomach and you, you like look at your hands, right? And what you do, the goal with this is you want the hand on your chest to not move at all. Because if the hand on your chest is moving, those are... Uh, when we take shallow breaths, usually it's like chest type breathing. It's like, like when you're gasping, it's very chest like movements. Deep breathing is more belly breathing. So the goal is this is like instant biofeedback. That's what this is. So you look at your hands and the goal is the hand on your chest doesn't move at all. That's what you want. And then you watch the hand on your belly. And when you breathe, the hand on your belly should be the one that moves the entire time. And first of all, when you do this, what that does is it kind of distracts you and it focuses on how your hands and your breathing are doing right now, which is a bit of mindfulness and grounding within itself. It's focusing on the here and the now instead of your anxiety thoughts. But the other part about that is, is it's focusing on the deep breathing aspect. We're taking less of those shallow breaths, that kind of thing. So that kind of deep breathing, belly breathing is, is kind of twofold. Some people don't like that as much. Some people do like a hand breathing thing where they like breathe in. They So you trace your fingers, you breathe in uh, while, tr while tracing your finger 
one of your fingers, you breathe out while you trace the other. And again, this is uh, mindful in the way that you are focusing more on tracing your fingers. You're also, there's a mindfulness component in that you are feeling how your hand feels. So there are a ton of different ways to do these concepts that can be very helpful with anxiety. Um, and it sounds like this is one of them. It's less physical. The things that I described are very physical, right? If we're looking at our hands, this is a very physical thing. I can feel my hands on my chest, on my belly. I can feel my hands on, on my hand. I can feel my fingers on my hand, right? Like, these are very physical things that get paired with breathing. This one seems more imagination. I feel like this isn't something that I recommend with my clients because anxiety is often already in our head. And if we could just tell our anxiety thoughts, just don't think about that. Well, then I wouldn't have a job, right? Like my job doesn't exist because it would just be that easy to say, like, I just don't need to think about that. So often it is a lot more help. It's often easier basically for a lot of people to practice mindfulness when there's some kind of physical component to it. If we're focusing on something physical that kind of grounds us in the here and now, it's it's just easier to do. It's it's a way to kind of uh, ground us into the current moment or pull us out of that what if thought cycle. So this seems a lot from the one sentence that I've seen, to be fair, this seems a lot more in your head and less of a physical component that's the only reason I may not entirely recommend this to my clients, not because it's bad inherently, but I think it's just usually easier if there is something physical in front of us. So we can add physical moments into this though. So for example, if we are picturing a feather floating, we can hold something that goes in, in time with this. Like we can add physical components into this kind of stuff too, but this seems like very mindfulness. It seems like a grounding technique, it, but it's also like in our heads as much. Um, so like, this is very much a practical thing that can be used, but there are also very practical things that are very similar to this that are kind of like in the same family, like under that same umbrella. Trying to destroy a burp before I do like, before I read out loud mindfulness, because that's not usually what mindfulness is. <laughs> Your breathing keeps that feather floating. Just breathe slow and steady in and out. Am I, am I doing something? I can't tell if I'm supposed to push buttons to make the feather go up. Oh, I am. No, I'm not. Okay, I see the box going up and down, and I see the feather is not going up and down with it. Am I pushing buttons in time? I think that's what I'm doing. Gotta get in the flow. I just don't know what triggers the feather to go up and down. Like what buttons make it go up and down. Cause it's not literally my breath. As nice as that, potentially nice as that would be. So everything else fades away, and this is all we're focusing on. 
which again seems very mindful. See? Easy every time. I mean, I don't know about that. I think that these things like mindfulness, meditation, all of those grounding, all these things are something that get easier the more we do it. There's an element of skill that comes with all of this stuff that I don't think we talk about very much. Where if we are playing games, we recognize that the more we do it, the easier it gets. There's there's a, a definite component to that. The game by itself kind of demonstrates that. But when it comes to uh, mental health stuff, we don't recognize that very often. We don't recognize that mindfulness, deep breathing, meditation are things that get easier the more that we do it. So sometimes what ends up happening is we try deep breathing and if it doesn't work the first time we sit there and we go well it didn't work for me but sometimes that stuff needs a little more practice and sometimes what that means too is even though it feels silly or just like ridiculous sometimes practicing when we don't feel super emotional when we don't feel like we need to practice actually helps a lot too because then when we actually are emotional it is incredibly easier to do because we've been practicing rush out of there to solid ground which i mean would feel grounding feeling any better good i think so thanks for helping me calm down how did you know we'd start moving again you probably didn't and, and at a certain point it doesn't matter right like what mattered was helping her feel better like with the panic attack oh i totally thought we were done for Right? Like, it didn't matter. Oh my god, Becky. Look at this selfie, though. <sighs> Are you gonna slap a filter on it? I mean, at least they're both able to chuck about it. Chuckle about it. <sighs> there were more strawberries? I only died 47 times. <sighs> what other buildings are on this mountain? Mirror Temple. That sounds fantastic. Sounds very like Laura Crofty. Did you know most climbing mishaps occur due to exhaustion? Remember to take regular breaks. Great. Oh my god, this looks awful. Oh man, look at this place. Feeling adventurous? Uh, I don't know. It looks pretty dark in there. More like a nightmare than an adventure. I'll just take a quick peek, snap a few photos. This place must be ancient. Theo sounds like the sidekick who like dies early on in the movie or video game or whatever. <sighs> My Instapix followers are gonna eat this up. Wait, is that, did he have a reflection? There's no way this ends well. Oh no, I don't. <sighs> I don't like this. I don't like the mirrors. I already know. Oh, and it's dark. I don't like it. I don't. I don't like it. Lick it. Ah, oh, mirrors everywhere. Whoa! Oh, my dash is activated. Well, oh. jokes on you. I don't have to go up. I 
I can though. Oh. I don't like mirrors. Uh oh. This is Theo's phone. No! No! I was kidding! I was kidding! It was a joke! <sighs> Don't panic, Madeline. Maybe it just fell out of his pocket. I doubt that, though, for someone who values Instapix as much as Theo does. I'll give it back when I find him. He's in front of a mirror. Does he have a bad Theo? <laughs> I was kidding! I was kidding that he's like the adventurer, the sidekick who goes in and like something bad happens. I was kidding. That Oh, and a smash mirror. Oh. Also, there's like a Cthulhu in the background. Uh. Oh, wait. Oh, I was like, where do I go? Oh, I go up here. This way through is not great. Like, not easily lit. What do you do? I don't know, but I can just dash past. What are, what are you? What? What are you? Oh, I gotta dash into you. What do you do? Oh. Well, I'll just avoid you. Oh, fuck no. No, that's okay. Oh, no, stay away, stay away. <sighs> best orbs in game. I think we have a different definition of best. I want to... Uh, I want to avoid them. <clears throat> Uh. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. I don't know how I feel about the debt. The these block thingies. Uh. I don't think that strawberry's worth it. I can't go in there because I have to hit the button. I can't go in there because I have to hit that button. Oh. Sweet. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck? That's not, that's not worth it. That's not worth it. That's a big ol' nope for me. Nope. Mm -mm. Okay. Wait. The blue things only light up once I've gone past them. So that can help me find my way. Because, like, that blue one lit up when I passed it, but, like, these ones, these blue ones near... Oops. These blue ones near the strawberries, um, I haven't gone past it, and they aren't lit up. So, I can tell where I've been and not been. That way. Stay. Thank you. <laughs> you just. Yeah, so they light up. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, so now I know I've been here. <laughs> I don't like the red bubbles, though. So I know I've been here. Nope, no! no! <sighs> the music here reminds me no that's fine that's perfectly fine the music here reminds me of like final fantasy type music when you're in like a lot of the temples and stuff like that oh no I gave Bob a big hug. I gave Bob the biggest of hugs. I gave... No. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, so I have to go off to the right. I need the key. But I don't know how to get to the key. So like, do not. <sighs> okay. So like, it's off to the right. I mean, yeah, that's a way to do it. Ugh. Ugh. Do I just dash all the way over there? Bob's gonna get ya. Bob got me. It's like, I just need to be a smidge higher. was up. Cool. I also don't like how Cthulhu of Crafty and these things look. the dark area. Oh. Well, that doesn't help.
Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. I just wanted to see what the block did. So in theory, I don't think I can dash through that without like invisibility or er, invincibility. I can dash once through it. I've done that, but then I'd have to dash more. The game isn't intended to do that. Cool. So I need the key to get to the dark room that has the eyes in it, or it's a block. The blocks, if they were sideways, would look like eyes. Oh, that's awful. It's like they don't want you to use infinite dashes in here. Uh, where do you take me? Oh, that's way easier. Except for the one that like kills you. <laughs> yeah, imagine if you didn't have infinite dashes. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like it wasn't intended that way, so. Ooh. Oh. Well, this side only has a strawberry. I'm imagining. This is death, right? Yeah, that's death. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to get that light. Well, the way back isn't as easy. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so if they work at, like, dash assist... Oh, no, don't keep going that direction. I can't turn them. Oh! Okay. Well, if that's the case... No, that wouldn't work. Oh, that wasn't what I wanted. Let's just get out of here. So. No. No, don't. No. Yeah, I can only go one direction, though. They don't turn, right? The bubbles, you can't get the bubbles to turn once you're in them. <sighs> yeah, they don't turn. Are you winning? Yes, I am winning. That wasn't what I wanted. I need a bubble, like, right here.
Ooh. Yeah. The direction that you're, like, going in is where they'll go. But then I'm still limited by the, like, four direction, or, like, not four. Yeah, the four directions around me, right? So I can't make it turn. Well, it's, I guess it's not four, it'd be eight, the eight directions, because you can do diagonals. Ugh. Yeah, eight directions, including diagonals. Oh, that was nice. They put me up here. little bit of a hint because I think that this is definitely something where I would know the mechanics more if I wasn't dashing everywhere which as fun as it is is oh no that's cheat it's cheating in a way that like I don't learn the mechanics as intended I keep going meaning to go down and then I die there we go Can they go across screens? Is that what it is? Ah, uh, there we go. Ah, oh, I don't like that. Ugh. Thank you. Also, what is behind it? Oh, that's it reflected. <sighs> ah. Ah. Oh, I have to jump out of it. for the hints, by the way. Whoa, oh no, that's not where I wanted to go. Oh, I need to go down and turn to the right. I don't like this room. Bye, Mega Eevee, thanks for popping by. Oh, this is the eyes that I saw. Oh, don't trap me. Theo, there you are. Madeline, hey. Is your picture all blurry because you're in the mirror? Uh, why are you inside a mirror? No, no, no. You're in a mirror. I'm pretty sure you're the one in the mirror. What happened? Well, I was taking a nonchalant mirror selfie, as you do. You know. It's your boy Theo in this ancient temple. No big deal. Hashtag blast. <laughs> Next thing I know, I woke up lying on the ground. What does it look like over there? How can I find you? It's, uh, it's real dark and weird. There's... Wait, something's coming. 
I'm feeling a strong inclination to run away. Be careful, okay? Okay. What is this, BuzzFeed Unsolved? That's what it feels like. It's me, your boy. Hi, Theo. Oh, what's up here? That looks horrible. I don't think that's worth it. I also don't like when they're all orange. I just want to light up the torches. I don't think I'm going to get that strawberry. It makes me feel accomplished to light up the torches. I also don't like how all these things look like eyes. I can't see where I'm going. I can't tell if this is better or worse. Oh, it's worse, for sure. I just want to light everything up. Can you all get lit, please? Then there's less of a feeling of impending doom. Because the darkness is unknown and the unknown is inherently scary. tell where I'm going then, but at least I can see. <laughs> uh, okay, where am I going now? Well, I can go down there, here. That's cool to just ah, see it all get lit up. Okay. Well, that was an easy strawberry, considering all of this. There is a feeling of like impending doom or dread or something like that. Having it be so dark. I think this is the first time the game has been so dark. Oh, I can't, can't, can't do it there. It's gonna bother me. More that it's um, not lit than anything else. Oh, it's so dark. Okay, now it's lit up. Um, it also, I don't like how the crystals are lit up. I suppose that strawberry will just stay there. That's fine. Oh, that's not worth going for. There's something, yeah. Right here. You guys like... Oh, that popped my neck. Hello, okay. Arcane Darkling. It also fits in this context to say hello darkness, my old friend. That's what I wanted to be trapped in here. Oh, this like shadow. That's no, don't go into the shadow. <laughs> I've come to talk with you again. Yep. Oh. <laughs> that can just that can stay there. Nope. That can stay there. Yeah, it looks like Cthulhu of crafty and stuff there. I don't like that. I just want to light things up, please. 
Oh! No, I'm sorry. What was that? I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. Cool. <laughs> no, thank you. I don't want to get the strawberries that badly. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know which way it's progressing. So I guess I'll just go down. Here. See? Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. No. What? Oh, I can't. Can't dash with that. That also doesn't look great. None of this looks great. <sighs> As you light a torch, can't put it out, so prepare to look at it forever. I mean, I also don't have to look be it on that screen, though. I think this is the same screen I was at before. I don't like it, though. It's very, like, Lovecraftian, and I don't like it. Just go up here where the torches are not yellow. Oh, I need a key, son of a bitch. <sighs> oh, that ceiling is awful. And I'm trapped. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Oh, no, no! Yes! Oh. <laughs> ah! Nope! That, that's okay. As long as the ceiling isn't lava, that's okay. I did forget how to hold onto walls. Cause there is a whole section without walls. <laughs> oh, we don't need no stinking walls. We'll just bounce our heads into the ceiling for infinity. I say that as though that's been working for me. I feel like the game is like, oh, you've been dashing into everything? Let me make it so you can't do that. With this very like calm music in the background. I keep ignoring that bubble and it's not always intentional. I was trying to grab. Hmm. <laughs> it's like the one time I get into the bubble and I zoom into the ceiling. <sighs> <laughs> I 
real art is making references without making references. I do appreciate trying to keep things spoiler-free. Oh! No! Bob is already red. We don't need to put a red bubble into the mix. Oh. Oh. No. Mm. Uh. Why is Bob angry? I don't know. Maybe I brought, like, the wrong wine when I came over one time. You know, I brought, like, a white wine instead of a red wine when we were having steak. I don't know. Good. <gasps> Oh, that was an accident. <laughs> or is he blushing? <laughs> That's a good way to put it, too. Oh. <gasps> oh? This is okay? No, it's not okay. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, eye holes. Well, that's a thing. Oh? Oh, I don't I don't want to be here. This looks awful. <sighs> this looks This looks awful. What? What? <sighs> oh! I'm the thing! I was waiting for it to move! I was also expecting a cutscene. I was expecting it to move and it... It didn't. It just... Oh, uh, this game is weird sometimes. It's very like, it's a very retro filter too. Oh, can't do that. Okay. This feels too easy. <laughs> Compared to everything else in the game. I don't like destroying myself. Also, it's gone now, and there's stuff everywhere. Oh, no. Oh, no. What now? <clears throat> I'm chasing her? Hey, where are we? What did you do to Theo? 
You think I'm doing this? That's cute. Sweetheart, this is exactly what I warned you about. I don't like those things. For science, what does this do? Death. It does death. I don't know why I'm surprised. Don't try to make this my fault. You still don't get it. The mountain gave me this body. But I'm not the only creepy thing living in that messed up head of yours. This can't also be from us. Don't like what you see. What a surprise. Shut up. I tried to stop you. <laughs> Voice. Look in the mirror. All of this is yours. This temple only magnifies the mountain's power. You're in control here, not me. But like, even if this did come from us, that doesn't imply that we can necessarily control this stuff. It's just like negative thoughts. We can't just like control it. Elder Bob. Eldritch Bob. I don't believe you. You're part of me. Why do you want to hurt me? Poor Madeline. Always the victim. All I do is babysit you and you hate me for it. Ooh. You're unraveling and you know it. If you care so much about protecting me, why don't you just explain what's going on? It's fair. Like you would have listened. You never gave me a chance. Okay, bye. Oh, sad. She sounds so scared. Please, just help me get out of here. Now you want me to save you? Why are you doing this? Just be on my side here, please. Stop trying to make me feel like a monster. You really want to know why I won't help? Because you deserve this. Again, like the word deserve is so heavy. Like how do we decide who deserves what? <sighs> Still think you can climb this mountain? Shut up. I don't need your help. I'll do this alone. Huh. This is a lot. Oh, oh. Go, oh, no, I need to do this. Oh. Ah. <sighs> uh. Oh, I hate doing mechanics. Even in other games, I hate doing mechanics. <sighs> the entire place has changed. Oh, nope, not where I wanted to go. I wanted a diagonal. That would have been great. I want, I want a diagonal. Also, I want to change you back. Almost. That was almost. Ooh. I can grab onto the block too. I suppose that's an option. <sighs> I don't like all these heads now. Oh! Oh shit! What? Oh, I have to hit the button. I was like, what do I do? Oh, no, I... No! Oh! Go! Oh, I'm alive! How am I alive? I don't have invincibility on, do I? Oh, I don't. Okay.
I bonked it. Oh, I, just, I didn't notice and assumed I was dead. They also seem to go in like one direction. Oh shit. Blake Oshiro. Oh. <sighs> Please leave me alone. Oh, they can't go through this though, right? Right. Who? <sighs> oh. <sighs> Play before is like a tutorial. Does that make sense? Yeah, because now I know that they can't go through these things. I suppose that playing as playing against Oshiro was uh, also like a bit of a a section where it like builds upon the previous knowledge, right? Like, oh, <laughs> oh no. How many more things do I have to get? Oh, oh no! Nah. <sighs> I feel like getting the furthest ones first. And then coming back for the closer ones. Ooh. Oh! Get off me! Oh! It's kinda cute when it's been bonked! Oh! No. No. <sighs> Don't have them here, too. If this is all in my head, why is it so hostile? I mean, that's how negative thoughts are. Negative thoughts are usually like hostile towards us and not other people. Those the things are hunting me. I'm a trespasser in my own world. Theo is trapped somewhere in here because of me. Oh, she's so sad and scared. If I give in fully, maybe the temple will let him go. Given to what? Given Madeline. Mad Mad Madeline. Breathe. This is all coming from inside me. Get up, Madeline. Think of the feather. Yeah, you can save Theo. It's like you don't have to let your negative thoughts rule over you or control you. Even though we may have those thoughts that say that we like maybe we should give in because maybe those thoughts that saying maybe we should give in maybe that is inherently part of the negative thoughts i don't like the mirrors yeah <gasps> oh. She needs a head pat. It's like when cats are scared and they need some good scritches. <clears throat> uh. Oh, no. I think I need 
actually jump out before I hit the wall. Oh, no, not like that. <laughs> oh, not like that either. Death. You can chill in the bubbles. I think I'm trying to get the timing right to get to the next bubble, though, because I've with the first one, if I hit the wall, I think it's harder for me to get to the next bubble. Whereas if I jump out early, ah, um, I think it's a little easier, but I have to get the timing and the angle right. And then sometimes the bubble just goes in the direction I don't want it to go in. Like it goes in the direction it was just jumping. No. Oh, I see. You go all the way over to the right, and then you get to the bubble at the bottom, and then you go straight up. <sighs> However, it actually has been a while. Um, I think this might be actually a good time to stop for the day. Or at least chill out before we stop. There is actually a lot of progress today. And I'm not afraid to use the invincibility. Yeah, we got pretty far. Thank you. I do appreciate, um, like, the balance between trying not to spoil things, but also helping when I need it. <laughs> I can't even imagine how long it would take me to do this without assist mode, so I'm really glad the game has that. This VOD will be available too. I'll probably like cut out some of the break stuff and the opening and like the ending stuff just so it's mostly the game. Um, YouTube will let me do that as long as it's not too long. So if the stream was really long like yesterday's, it won't let me um, cut that stuff out. What are my thoughts on the story? I, I mean, like, I like it so far. I think that it really touches on anxiety as far as, like, panic attacks and how we handle panic attacks. I'm still really curious on, like, why we started climbing the mountain to begin with, because I had mentioned before what if like our, our these this negative version of our of ourselves showed up before but she had already said that like this was only showing up because of the mountain like the mountain magnified this stuff so it's kind of i'm i'm wondering if there is something like i i look at this as is there something super specific or traumatic maybe that happened did we have like our first panic attack and that made us decide that like one was enough so that's kind of how I'm looking at it, but it's, there's enough to the story that I'm intrigued and I want to know more. So I really do like it. It's enough that I can sit here and talk about the mental health aspects and like how mental health shows up too. Even though the game 
has things like ghosts and stuff like that too, which I imagine is a hard thing to potentially balance because we have things that are real life and mental health, but then we have things that aren't real life with ghosts and stuff. The music is really nice too. And the game does a lot with trying to teach you the mechanics before they are necessary as well. Like um, the thing that stands out to me as someone who's been skipping a lot of mechanics and I will own that is how the Oshiro battle really teaches you like this boss is going to go in a straight line. And then we have those other creatures that did the exact same thing. Who is my favorite character so far? Um, probably like Theo. Theo is just like this sweet summer child who like bumbles into things. And there's a part of that that's adorable. It just like reminds me of my dog who just like is incredibly smart and incredibly dumb all at the same time. I also like the grandma. Um, I like the idea of them being like speedrunners who just like are there. But I, I picture Theo being like this type of speedrunner who just like speedruns without knowing that they're speedrunning. And it's like, how? And there's like, I don't know, take a selfie with me. <laughs> so Theo, um, Theo, I find adorable. I also like how Theo's background is plaid to match it. And like the little images in, that stick out in my mind for Theo is like Theo's head sticking out upside down from the vent and like the the sprite thing for the chat was that way too. <laughs> so I really, uh, the Theo I find adorable. My friend despises Theo with all their being, and I think it's hilarious. Oh, no. <sighs> I I think it's sometimes funny how we go into games and we find some of these characters, like, uh, characters that we like or don't like. Some characters, I think, are, like, universally loved or hated. <sighs> like, they're they're just written to be, like, hated. And some of them have redemption arcs, and some of them don't. Who doesn't like nonchalant selfies in a mirror? Probably people who are very self-conscious. I guess they don't like lackadaisical characters. Yeah, I could also see it being where if they see Theo as someone who like put other people in danger, where it's almost like how, like, why couldn't you pay attention more? Like your actions, almost like... I could see it where it's like, if your actions are putting other people in harm's way, I could see that being an unlikable thing. Lackadaisical. What comes to my mind when I think of lackadaisical is like, without care. Kind of like how Theo was like, what's this lover do? It's important. And like pulling it without trying to investigate more. That's what I think of with lackadaisical. Cal. Yeah. Universally loved, except by Aubrey. They have similar characteristics. Yeah, I can see that. Careless. Dopey is a word that comes to mind. Like, not stupid, but just, like, doesn't think before they act. And again, like, not with bad intentions. Like, these are the things that I think of when I think of, like, lackadaisical. And when we talk about languages too, there's the concept of connotation and denotation. Denotation is like the dictionary definition that comes with the word and connotation is like the implied meaning behind the word. So when we talk about crazy, for example, a word I'm not fond of, it's not the dictionary definition of crazy that I'm not fond of, which I can't even think of off the top of my head with the dictionary definition would be, it's the connotation. It is like how our society thinks about the word crazy. Um, so there are, there are like two different aspects when we talk about languages and how words are seen. And, you know, it, it's perfectly fine that English is not your first language. I find that admirable. I can't communicate effectively in any language that isn't English, but I can't even imagine the connotations of words in a language that isn't English. Cause I just, I, that it's impacted by culture and history and all these other things. Has anyone suggested the game Chicory? Probably. My guess is yes. I have 
last time we checked like 39 games that are still on my steam wish list from games that have been suggested um not all of them are games that like in my brain i actually know what they are as in like i i see a recommendation and i just put it on my wish list and i don't all know what they are um there was that steam sale for halloween and i got a lot of games with that sale um because I think it was like 80 or 90 games, and now it is 40 games. So I think Chicory's on there, but I'd have to look to know for sure. Have I heard of the happy game? Not off the top of my head. <clears throat> did I get one shot? Yes, I did. One shot was one of the ones that was on sale. And Fran Bow. Fran Bow? Fran Bow. Bo? Bo. I'm going to go with Bo. Um, I think Little Misfortune, which is by the same development team, was also on sale, so I got that one too. The House of Fata Morgana? I'm not familiar with that one. It's a happy game. Yeah, I have a really long list of games that have been like recommended that I want to play. Um, so a lot of these games are kind of like on my radar, but I don't know quite when they'll happen. Right now, I'm um, putting out Edith Finch. Um, and I have some more games that I'm doing after that um, that are probably going to be a bit long. And then I'll get to some others um, from my list after that. It is a lot of games. I think when I looked at my Steam library, I have a, I have a lot of games. <laughs> and more just keep getting recommended, which is, I think, just kind of like how it works. Because then, inherently, more games come out. I don't know anything about One Shot. Um, so I think I would avoid spoilers. It's kind of like Undertale. Like, Undertale is on my list of games to play. I don't even know what type of game one-shot is. I just know it has cute artwork. A friend is library sharing with me on Steam, and they have like 500 games on there. That's a lot. <laughs> Participate in the purse sacrifice of the gamer. Yeah. No, that last Steam sale, really, that was that was a lot. It, it was very much a lot. <laughs> in this house, we love and appreciate the main character in one shot. I mean, they look cute. That's, that's all I know about it. Sad I can't have a blind playthrough of Undertale. Yeah, I think I have played it for like 27 minutes. Like I started it once and then I just stopped for some reason. I want to watch your other series, but for some reason I barely watch semi-realistic games. Is that like, um, when you say semi-realistic games, is that the Dark Anthology series that you mean? Like Man of Madon and Little Hope, are those the ones that you mean when you say that you can barely watch semi-realistic games? Three D. I am gonna play Undertale sometime. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if it'll be a stream or not. I'll have to see. Have a hard time with first person perspective games. I can see that. Um, first person, so there's something about like the FOV, like the, the, like the way they set it, set up like the, the, the depth of field type thing that sometimes can, um, make people nauseous. 
I had that with Slime Rancher myself. Um, so I, I, I think that's the only game for me that that caused that. But I know that that can cause it for a lot of people who um, with first person perspective games. Yeah, the happy game isn't a happy game. I mean, I think if you would name a game a happy game, that would be my suspicion. It's like, is it really a happy game? We tend to like things that have conflict. Otherwise, why would it exist? That's why, like, there aren't really any actual utopian novels. They're all dystopian. Otherwise, why? Like, why? What's the point? Like, it just never ends up working out to be interesting. Um, if you, uh, Mio, if you have that, like, first, that sickness or, like, you get nauseous with first-person games, a lot of games have that, that adjustment that you can make to, like, the FOV. I think that's a setting that often can help, and sometimes it takes some experimentation to figure that out, but that's what I've found with myself with Slime Rancher, is, like, kind of fiddling with those settings, because I would get a headache, um, with Slime Rancher. Bye, player... I see the player you mean. It was nice to have you. It seems like a lot of you like very like pixelated, very like artistic type games. Chicken Police, noir point and click detective game. I don't think I've heard about that. Yeah, so like cute artistic style. Spooky's Jump Scare Mansion. I've heard of it, but I've never played it. When you say Duck Season, is that like the horror Duck Season game? Oh no, Chi, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm familiar with that one. I've never played it myself, but I'm familiar with it. The Duck Season game, I mean. Um, Mori, I do have the Red Strings Club. It was part of the Steam sale that they had not too long ago. So it's like on my list of games that I have now. It's just a matter of like when I'll be able to play it. I don't think that we're, like, purposefully recommending games. I think that's just where the conversation ended up going. <laughs> oh, Red Strings Club asks you to analyze people and give um, your take on them. There's another game that I have on my wish list, and I can't remember what it's called. Um, it reminds me of, like, Papers, Please, that's like that, where you have to, like, diagnose people and decide if they're, like... Um, like how they are mentally and then decide if you're going to like give them treatment and like you have to do the treatment as well and i can't remember what it's called but my plan for right now is to make mondays a usual streaming day at the same time so like it's 10 a.m my time when we started so once we're done with um, Celeste, excuse me, um, being able to move on to other games and just make, uh, Mondays just, like, a regular stream day is my thought. Um, and then if my schedule allows for, like, other days in the week, maybe adding those. Mind Scanners. Yeah, that was the game that I was thinking of. I think... A lot of games that have you diagnose someone are delving into that idea of philosophical concepts of mental health. Because all uh, when we talk about mental health and diagnosing in particular, someone out there has decided this is what this is how we define what mental health is and isn't. 
Um, and that changes over time, which is all about the, the philosophy, uh, the philosophical ideas of it. Because technically, there was a point in time where the LGBT community was diagnosed, was, was a diagnosable thing that was like part of, of these definitions on mental health. And as soon as they took that out of the out of definition, millions of people were technically, if, if we're talking about mental health, were technically cured overnight. Um, so there's, anytime we talk about diagnosing with mental health, there's a lot of philosophy on that. Because somewhere out there, someone decided, um, like, this is what, this is what mental illness is and isn't. And it changes over time. And there's always those aspects of, like, how do we define that and how do we not define that? That idea, though, that like we just change the definition and suddenly millions of people are technically cured boggles my mind. But I think that we often don't think about that kind of stuff, um, about like who decides what, um, cause I think we're just used to like, when, we, when it comes to physical health, we're just used to like, we know what a broken arm is. <laughs> we don't have to sit there and think about who decides what a broken arm is and isn't. Um, but when it comes to mental health, it is, it is something that, like, someone has decided. Um, and I mean, like, there's all that history and, like, all that stuff, but, um, for me, it's always a weird thing to think about, is, like, suddenly we can just change the rules and all of that stuff just changes. <laughs> I hope your arm is not currently broken, um, Mega Eevee. I also hope it healed well. It's definitely abstract and hard to quantify. But again, like we we had to quantify it. So how did we quantify it? Like these are these are I think the like when I think of the philosophy on mental health, this is what I think about it. Think about is like how do we quantify it? Um I do think that I'm gonna have to stop. Um here for now it's been so much fun hanging out though i will be back to stream next monday at starting at the same time which is 10 o'clock for me i don't know what time it will be for you um but i will let you guys go and i hope you have a great rest of your day